Hi everyone. It's always exciting when we're learning a new verb tense, and that's exactly what we're going to do in this lesson. It's going to break us into, we already have the present and the future. Now we can actually talk about the past using the imperfect. Uh, so we've already talked about this a bit in class at a couple of different occasions, but what is imperfect? You know, that, that's, that's a tense uh, but it's, it's more than simply talking about the past. In fact, it's not a simple past. We remember that in its aspect, what, what kind of, you know, uh, things are going on with this verb. Uh, we, we called it progressive. This, this meant that it was ongoing in the past. We're also going to learn that the imperfect can have, even in the, well, still past tense, but have a meaning that's not just progressive or ongoing, uh, but what uh, linguists call uh, conative, C-O-N-N-A-T-I-V, uh, comes from the Latin verb conor, uh, which means try. <laughs> so these are, ver the conative sense the cognitive aspect of the imperfect is he kept trying to do something. There's no um, statement about whether it actually happened, but the effort was there, the, the attempt, the cognitive aspect. So active, again, that's non-passive, or for Greek, also not middle. Indicative means this, this is a statement of fact. Uh, even if it didn't actually happen, it was cognitive. It was trying to be done in reality. Uh, thematic, uh, we're going to get to ultimately when we learn non-thematic or athematic verbs, but these means, uh, this means for Greek that there's a thematic vowel that keeps popping up in these. Uh, and for what we've seen so far, everything we've learned has been thematic. This is either omicron or epsilon, as we have from amen, or even a kind of long uh, o sound in the o ending, or e, ace, the diphthong, ete, we're working with these thematic vowels. That's that's the lesson behind all that. So good, and we all know what a verb is. So let's erase this all and actually get started with our form. So what we've learned six principal parts. Let's do a quick review with our favorite verb, because it's so short, luo. I loosen, I set free. Again, we, we, we remember that analyze or analysis this is a leucis, uh, a dissolving, a breaking up. This is what luo is. So luo is our first principal part. Write that under the Roman numeral, meaning I loosen, let's say. Then we had learned that the second principal part, which we got to apply a bit last week, was luso, the future, I will loosen. Third was elusa, short alpha, which allows the accent to move back to the antipenal. Remember, these are all verbs, uh, and therefore it's a recessive accent. This will become important as we actually get to forming the imperfect. Four, five, six, let's kind of right ahead. All right, so fourth is our perfect. So here we have leluca, again, short alpha, sends it back. Lelumai, long diphthong, but because it's alpha iota at the end, for accentuation purposes, that short selling it, sending it back to the antipenal again. And then finally, eluthane. So this is perfect, this is perfect middle passive, and this is aorist passive, this is aorist. We're going to learn about all of that <laughs> later. The good news is, for the purposes of learning the imperfect, we can forget about principal parts two through six. That was a fun review, but we're going to be focusing in and working with this first principal part, luo. Well, we already know how to do this in the present. This is where we have luo, lues, you dissolve, you loosen, lue, oops, sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself, lue, he, she, it is loosening. Um, luomen, luete, y'all are loosening, and then luusi, with that movable new. So the one thing that we saw here is that the accent always was falling on the stem. Uh, remember the stem is that part that precedes the thematic vowel in any ending. So we have this lu, and that's where the accent kept falling. 
It was very convenient. Oh, sorry, that epsilon shouldn't be in there. We have just Lou here. So good. This was easy because when we had these long, when we had these disyllabic endings, amen, eta, everything was short or usi and was sending it back to that anti -pianol. Here in the singular, all of our endings were long and it also so happened that luo, you couldn't go any further back because it was a short stem, but still everything was following on the penalt, the second to last syllable. Well, good. So, so this was, well, this was the present tense. This was the present, I guess we could kind of do this, present active indicative of thematic verbs. This is what we've already done. Uh, but that's not what we're doing today. We're working on the imperfect. So we're going to do two different adjustments. So remember, this is the first principle part that we're working with, luo. Um, but also remember what I had just written up there on the third principle part, elusa, the aorist, which we'll get to more, we had this epsilon hanging out ahead. We're going to have this too in the imperfect, and this is called the past indicative augment. Past indicative augment, I might call it PIA for short. So the PIA is this epsilon that precedes the stem. So again, we can kind of get our magenta ink there. Lu is the stem. O is the personal ending. Here we have the same thing. Lu is the stem. This is the PIA, the past indicative augment. And then this sigma came into the aorist. And then ultimately this alpha was the personal ending. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't even learned the aorist yet, but this principal part that you've already committed to memory, this is what's happening. We're kind of cre you know, attaching things to this stem. The stem tells us the meaning, loosen, set free, etc., destroy even. Um, here we have the, the stem, but all this extra information. So now let's finally <laughs> get ourselves to talk about the imperfect active indicative of thematic verbs. So I'm going to write, begin by writing that stem, lu. So this is the stem, destroy, loosen, set free. We're going to add that past indicative augment. Why? Well, we're in the indicative, and the imperfect is a past tense. So this is a, called, you know, a past tense. Sometimes it's called a historical or even secondary. These are all fancy words to say, in essence, that these things happen in the past tense. So something in the past, indicative, gets an augment. But now what we need is these personal endings. We're using um, this stem, which is from the first principal part, but we're going to need endings that suggest the uh, imperfect. In theory, you could just use our regular uh, in, uh, present indicative actives, but those don't work here. Greek has its own set of imperfect endings. Uh, we're going to see these come up a few times, so it's worth noting them. So let's build a chart. Get a good neutral color for the chart. Let's see if I can do that better. All right. And this is following along Cynthia Shelmerdine's uh, chart on page 20 of chapter 4. Uh, so again, we're going to break things up into singular and plural. And now we're dealing with verbs, not persons, so or not nouns. So we work with persons. First, second, third person in each. First, second, third. And then remember that our stem here is going to be lu but we're going to be adding things on both sides. Uh, we'll have a rough translation chart here. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get everything because, as we've said, Greek verbs can often be translated into English in a number of ways. But this will be our kind of thing to work with. And then we're also going to have the endings and kind of break those apart for everyone. So let's start off with the first singular. The translation here was going to be I was loosing. I like to say loosening, but the, the thing is it's not 
single O. It's not losing, it's, it's loosening, it's, it's dissolving, it's that sort of thing. So we're going to have our past indicative augment throughout this entire chart. So I'm just going to cheat and go ahead and put all of these smooth breathing epsilons. Those are going to be our PIAs. Then we can add the stem throughout. And again, this will be easy going. We don't need to think, we just need to write Lou, 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 Lou. So, past indicative augment, stem, the Lou, and now we're finally going to get to the personal endings. So, here we're going to have on, thematic vowel omicron, but then a new ending. This is weird, we've never seen this for the first person. Then we're going to have epsilon sigma and then simply S, or, uh, epsilon. So we see some similarities. We have an O sound in the first. Let, let me uh, erase this endings and let, let's write the uh, present indicative active over here for comparison. So again we'll have luo, luas, Lu, that's not omega. Lue, luamen, lu, ete, and then luusi, or n. All right. So yeah, let me get all those accents in. That was the present indicative active. I am loosing you are loosing. Here we're going to have this uh, progressive past tense. I was loosing, now you were loosing. He, she, it was loosing. And then now let's go into the um, plural first person. Again, this will be similar. Amen. Ete. And then here we have on. This is frustrating because it's identical to that top. Uh, so first person, I was loosing, is going to be identical to third person plural, they were loosing. This may seem frustrating, but if you think about English, um, I run, you run, she, he, it runs, we run, y'all run, they run. We can use the same form for five out of six. Greek is only using the same form for two, and though that is a little frustrating, um, it, it's easily figured out in context. So rarely will you be reading Greek and say, is that a first person singular or a third person plural? The answer is, well, if you know we're talking in an I perspective, we're gonna know that's first person singular. If we have a third person plural nominative in the sentence, we can be pretty sure that that's going to be third person, they were losing. All right, and then let's fill out the rest of the chart. Y'all were loosing. And then we were loosing. And again, these can be cognitive. It could be, I was trying to loose. I kept loosing. These are possibilities. But now, let's go back and remember that verbs have recessive accent, which means that the accent always wants to go as far back as possible, can never go beyond the anti-penult, but we can kind of label, you know, we have the ultima here, and sometimes we might even have the ultima further, and then uh, we have the penult somewhere, and then in this case we have the anti-penult here, for the singular at least. So short vowel at the end, on, Omicron is always short, so we can actually go all the way back to this epsilon. So let me get red for the um, uh, accent. So eluan. This is no longer on the stem like we had with luo. We have an augment so we can get further back. And then we have a short personal ending that's monosyllabic. So we hop this middle stem for the accent and actually put it on uh, the past indicative augment on the antipenal. Same with elues and then elue. So luo, lues, lue. I loosen, you loosen, singular, he, she, it loosens. Eluan, I was loosening. Elues, you were loosening. 
Elue Kishi it was losing. But here we're going to change this up in the plural where we have amen, disyllabic. So this is short, so we can hop back to, but we have to count that omicron. So elu amen, eluete, but then here we're identical to the nominative or the first person singular, so we can hop back eluan. So this has gotten a little bit trickier, where before we always knew to put the accent on the stem. Here the accent is movable because these are short monosyllabic endings in the singular, and then when they combine with these short but disyllabic endings in the first and second person plural, uh, accent accentuation rules can change. The rules are the same, but, but where the accent is being placed moves throughout. That should do it for right now, and uh, next time we're going to look at different uses of the definite article. Uh, this was previewed in class last week, but we're actually going to tackle it in earnest in this video lesson. See you then.